Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host, Kryptonite, aka Jermaine, interviews another content creator in regards to their journeys thus far. We talk about their ups, their downs, their wins, their losses, triumphs, all that good stuff, just so we can further this conversation so we creators can know that we're not the only ones feeling this way. Today's guest, I'm going to go ahead and read their bio before I introduce them, and then we'll get this thing started. Are you looking for a fun, seasoned, engaging content creator who is for growth with an amazing community? If so, Kaylee, aka Red Carpet Games, is a complete package. As a broadcaster, Kay began her streaming debut in 2017. Her community is diverse with members from all around the world. But what they all share together is the same welcoming comedic spirit that Kay puts in all her content. Kay can be found anywhere, but her work spans on many social platforms, Spotify, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and more. Kay is also the founder and owner of Inspire Image LLC, a social content and management company that is focused on providing entertainment services and safe spaces on and off stream. Aside from that, Kay is more than a content creator. Her work branches out within parenthood, mental health, entrepreneurship, and self-care with a village of supporters surrounding her. Ultimately, Red Carpet Games is a serious content creator who continues to develop, grow, and monetize audiences through content products such as podcasts, communities, and various online projects. Without further ado, let me introduce my guest for the evening, Kaylee, aka Red Carpet Games. How are you doing today? Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good this morning. I actually uh, went to bed early because I was like, okay, I've, I've been, my sleep schedule's been super off lately because I've mm -hmm. been binge playing Remnant 2. So I'm kind of like up till three o'clock in the morning. And I was like, let me, let me fix my sleep schedule. So I'm back on track though. Good. Yeah. I tried to, I usually stream on Fridays with the, uh, I got a fight night crew. And I was like, guys, I got to get off it too. I'm sorry. I got stuff to do in the morning. So they were very <laughs> understanding. So I read your bio. There's stuff in there that I didn't even know existed. Where, where do you want to start? What, what have you been up to lately as far as your content goes? So as of recently, I have just been trying to push out like more content on various platforms. So my main focus right now has been my own personal website and blog which is redcarpetgames.com. And then I have two YouTube channels. I don't, I know you're familiar Ooh. with my previous self before yeah. I rebranded. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I came from originally having the name, holding the name Lady Kaylee. That's what everybody knew me as. But right. um, after going through some personal health issues that kind of put me out for like four to five months, I lost my momentum on my previous channels. And when I came back to it, I was like, you know what? This is the great opportunity for me to like rebrand myself and re like redefine who I am as a content creator. So I have been kind of like repurposing like my old platform pages and just just putting out like multiple content that's just like relatable to me, you know, things that I connect with, things that bring me joy. Um, I have a background in, in doing fashion as well. So like I wanted to bring all of that into the mix because like lately I've been, you know, before I rebranded, I was feeling like I wasn't being my true authentic self. Okay. And then I got lost in the sauce, you know, being yeah. around certain groups of people and stuff like that. So my focus has been just, okay, put yourself out there, focus on the things that brings you joy, focus on your gifts. So like, you know, I have a lot of creative skills Right. I do art. Um, I used to do. I used to do music. I used to play instruments. So like, I'm what? just getting back. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. like, okay. You know how like there's there's people you meet in your life that you're like you freaking do everything. Like, is there yes. like that one thing you don't do? I kind of consider myself to be like one of those people. Like, I have it sounds so, like it. So many passions and so many things that I've gotten into over the years, even throughout my childhood, like people probably wouldn't believe me if I tell them like, I used to do ballet. I used to do tap. I used to dance. What? Like I used to do cheerleading. <laughs> I used to do oh I used my to goodness. Play basketball. I used, I did tennis. Like I did everything, but that's how my mom raised me and my brother. She used to put us in like all these sports, all these activities. 
I learned how to sew. I I did political stuff. I used to sit in on um jury duty and stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, like it's it's crazy. I, you know, I did wow. a lot of community service. So like I'm very tapped in into like just community community engagement like activities. Mm-hmm. Like I like, you know, going out and doing like food drives and stuff like that. Like I'm I just I do everything. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. That's amazing. Good Lord. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've been working on. So I've been working on my <laughs> I got distracted a little bit there, but right. I've been you know, on my website. Good. I have a few other projects that I got lined up um, because I do have a passion for fashion. I've been working on doing my own online merch store, which is actually mm. currently in development, but I haven't launched it yet. Like I'm a perfectionist in a sense. So like I'm like, OK, I, I got to make sure everything is in place before yeah. I tell the world. So like, you know, I'm doing that. Um, also, there is a potential that I might be on a board for a new skating rink. Um, so, Ooh, okay. yeah, I've been tapped into the skate community. I've been getting back into that. <laughs> so, like, it's I've been busy. I've been very busy. Yeah, I was about to say, it sounds like you have a lot of uh, projects lined up. Not only are you rebranding. Well, you've been rebranding for a while now. I feel like that that change has happened, right? Yeah, yeah, it's if it's starting to feel that way cuz I'm like I just had my 1 year anniversary on Twitch, so like I'm a year in since mm-hmm. I've rebranded and I'm I want to say things are starting to have a lift off. Like yes. I'm starting to see the the progress of like you know when I initially rebranded. So it's mm-hmm. it's working out. It's doing good. Yeah, that's that is amazing. I want to say from an outsider looking in, I remember when you rebranded and like part of me like is terrified of rebranding. Like I'm not, I, I don't plan on rebranding, but that like seeing somebody else describe it. <laughs> terrified. I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, you had like on a, again, outside looking in, Lady K Lee, it looked like you had a nice following there. Everything was mm-hmm. going up. And I did notice you took the five months off. I didn't realize it was because of uh health reasons. But regardless, when you came back, I was like I mean, she must have a plan. Like, there's no, you don't just do this for no reason. And as I'm watching you grow red carpet games, like, not that I forgot about Lady Kaylee, but like, it's 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 taken over. Like, this is red carpet games now, and I was like, yeah, this is dope. I'm like, I like seeing this growth here. Yeah, yeah, and you and you, you you nailed it. It was terrifying for me to like <laughs> <laughs> commit to the rebrand. But the funny thing is, it's been. It's been that thing that's been eating away at my thoughts. Like even when I was streaming as Lady Kaylee, it was a thought that I had for like a couple of years Mm -hmm. um, into streaming under Lady Kaylee because I I, like I felt like nothing fit like what I was trying to do and the message I was trying to spread, you know, to my communities. And a lot of that was tied up in I I want to say that starting off with streaming on Twitch, I didn't I didn't initially go into it with the right mindset or I didn't really go into it with the actual plan. I kind of just was like, I'm just going to get on a stream and see what happens, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, but as I continue to grow on that channel, I was like, Ooh, I don't know how long I want to carry this name. Like I mm. like, I identify myself as lady Kaylee still, but like as a whole, that name wasn't initially mine because if you go and Google lady Kaylee, there's a bunch of other lady Kayleys that come up. Gotcha. for you. Um, okay. even though mine was always like kind of like in the top search bar because I'm the most active, you know, it's just I didn't like what I saw that was associated under the name. Also, I couldn't claim Lady Kaylee on my Twitter mm. or IG page. Somebody else already had it. And I, it's just like it felt like it wasn't mine in a sense. That makes sense. So, yeah, like, yeah. It kind of it kind of it kind of like messed with me mentally a little bit because I'm like well my ultimate goal is for me to own my brand like Mm -hmm. if I wanted to get my name trademark or anything like that like could I do it I probably couldn't have as Lady Kaylee because so many people were claiming it you know what I mean and I always have a an entrepreneur mindset even though I'm doing projects that are considered like fun for me so like I always go into into a situation or like you know things that I'm doing and I'm like okay well how can I turn this into like a business opportunity that's smart and it just it never like it never sat well with me so you know after after being on bed rest for like four or five months I was just like 
you know, I sat down, I talked to my partner about it. I was like, what do you think? Like, should I like rebrand? Like, is it, is it, would it be stupid for me to do? Because like, I mean, I think I built up like 10,000 followers on Twitch. Yeah, I mean, exactly. My YouTube was just at the mark to hitting a thousand subscribers. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm like, I don't like, I don't know what to do. Like people are probably going to think I'm crazy. Like, why would you do that? (laughs) You know, I had a few people suggest, well, why don't you just change the name on the channels you already have? And I'm just like, it's not even just about the name. It's like, Mm. it's like how I start and how I end it. Like, yeah, I want people to be able to look at my, my content and go, she's a variety streamer. I, I don't think I would have been able to get that even after re- changing my name from Lady Kaylee to something else because a lot of my following was from the 2K community. Yeah. And, you I know, you. like people were seeing me as a 2K player versus a variety streamer. So it's right. like that name was already attached to like all these adjectives and things that people, you know, labeled me as. Right. But it's, it wasn't what I wanted it. So. And, you know, there was a lot of built up trauma and mm-hmm, <laughs> things mm-hmm. I went through as Lady Kaylee. I just wanted to let go of all of that. And I was like, you know, what? I just need a fresh start. So, <laughs> you know what? Shout out to all the partners out there that like back us on these hard decisions that we have to make, because like that restarting your whole social thing is daunting. It's like you said, it's, it's scary, but like you had a vision and your partner backed you on that. So that that's amazing. And look at you now, like you doing what you want to do and you, you seem happier because the brand is exactly what you want it to be. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You know, we talked a little bit about it, but I'm going to go ahead and segue into our next section. As far as what you're doing right now and things that you're going to be pushing towards in the future, what would you say your current mindset is in regards to your content right now? Um, for me, the goal is to just continue to build communities and, and create better engagement between, you know, myself and like other fellow content creators or, you know, supporters, because I don't know if you notice, well, you probably do, because like, you're, you're pretty insightful, but like, there's a disconnect in, in, in these social (laughs) spaces that we are in where people's mindsets is just it's kind of like all over the place no one's on the same page even though streaming and being a content creator can be competitive like it's it's not a positive competition it's 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 starting to gear towards being more negative Uh yep i agree something like i can get on board with right because i feel like there's space and there's room for all of us exactly you know so like ultimately my goal is to just continue to spread like positivity you know be informative uh giving out good messages for people that that can use it and apply it to themselves to make themselves better and 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 make themselves grow in a way that they see themselves you know or like goals that they may have that they want to reach or desires that they have as a content creator you know i feel like if i can support those avenues that people are trying to reach I'm I can, I'm content in what I'm doing yeah. as a content creator. Agreed. I couldn't have said it better. Like, the, like you said, there's a lot of, I don't even know if we're saying it out loud, but there's a lot of negative hostility that's like circling, especially, I'm just going to say Twitter because Twitter is just a whole cesspool. But the competition, like I see competition as this, like I have a bunch of content creator friends who were basically going after the same thing, but not the same audience. So if you win in your lane, like that doesn't take anything away from me. And I'm happy for you because like seeing somebody else grow and make it just makes me want to push that much harder. Right. And it's like, it's like having classmates, like why wouldn't you want to have somebody that you consider a classmate to have the same success as you or to reach like certain, you know, like platforms, you know what I mean? It, right. It's so motivating to see like, and, but at the same time, you could be in competition with somebody and it still be positive. Like there's, there is a such thing as good competition. This is you true. Know, you can, you can be like, well, let's see who gets to 500 followers first, you know, like exactly. it's be a fun thing. But lately, you know, a lot of people have been 
I don't even want to use the word gatekeeping and selfish because <laughs> I feel like those two terms itself is also used very loosely in, in social media today because that is true. Gatekeeping and being selfish is not always necessarily a bad thing, but it's when we hear those terms, it's perceived as a negative thought. <clears throat> exactly. Because of what it's been associated with so far. Exactly. Mm, so, okay. I like I like where you're going with this. I'm gonna make you uh, dig into it a little bit deeper. How would you? What would be a, a example of good gatekeeping? Good gatekeeping, I feel like, and I speak on this a lot, is mm -hmm. protecting your privacy, like 100%. your personal information, like gatekeeping, yeah. like personal details about your family, yourself. Like you wouldn't share your social social security number with the world. You wouldn't share your actual living address, your home address with like people online, because obviously that is, that's inviting like, you know, predators, you know, people mm -hmm. that's out to harm you, stuff like that. Right. Like that's, that's, I feel like that's a good form of gatekeeping. Oh, hundred percent. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Or, you know, for example, like um, if you have like certain ideas or goals for your business and you're not willing to share those details yet because you're still trying to figure it out yourself. I know I'm usually the person, I don't like sharing things before I know what I'm doing myself because I might be informing the other person, you know, improperly or giving them the wrong information. And exactly. then like that falls on me for like giving out bad details, right? So like there's, there's good, there's good gatekeeping. Okay, no, those are perfect. I just want to make sure that somebody's listening. We're like, what are you talking about? I was like, there <laughs> is some out there, trust me. And those are perfect examples. And you mentioned uh, security. I just wanted to give your podcast a shout out. The episode I listened to was about making sure that you were protecting your personal information as a streamer. And there was some stuff in there. I was like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Um, cool. So definitely go check. What's the name of your podcast again? Let's talk red carpet and games. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I like the way you have everything titled out, so I can yeah, just go to what I need. Up, right? <laughs> exactly. So, um, shout out to you for that. But uh, no, I think, I think the current mindset is definitely something that I I wish that we can share with other. And you know what? I would say this: the people that we surround ourselves with are definitely more conscious, more aware of things that happen in the, especially the streaming space. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like we tend to avoid it pretty well part of me wants to kind of jump into it and just like try to spread that positivity like hey listen we don't all gotta fight each other we're chasing after the same little sliver of of money right now right relaxed <laughs> <laughs> exactly especially when you have kids you have kids oh my God. you have a household of people that like you have to take care of exactly like, you don't think about the childish things that you know what? That might be it. You know, I, was like, I don't got time to worry about that little petty shit. I'm trying to feed these kids. We got, yeah. <laughs> I got bills. Exactly. That is dope. All right. Let's roll into our next section here. Uh, lessons learned. What is something that you've learned throughout your content creation journey that you would take to heart and, and use that lesson throughout your life? Oh, it's so many um many as you want you can go <laughs> if, if i was to pick like the top thing mm -hmm. i would say being selfish okay. um of focusing more on yourself and um mm -hmm. i guess to elaborate on that i spent a lot of time trying to put things into motion waiting on others um so when ideas and desires i had did not play out the way i intended it to like i would get very frustrated Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until like after my failures and, and setbacks that I've had that I realized I spent too much time trying to wait on others to get on the same page as me. So with that being said, like <laughs> you can't make doors open that others closed and locked behind them. You also can't make others see the vision that God may have placed into you. What's for you may not be for them, even if they tried to claim it later on. You you kind of need to be selfish. And I'm not using that term loosely. Like I'm saying, fuck everybody and everything else. <laughs> it's all about me. Like not in that way, <laughs> because it's still important to find the balance and working on yourself and, and still having time for others that you care about. Right. Right. But 
to get, continue on what I was saying about what's for you may not be for them. Eventually the right people will find you and the right opportunities will come knocking at your door. So when it's your time, your blessings will show up, but you have mm -hmm. to put in the work yourself because no one else is going to do the work for you. So if you want to, if you want to put out videos on YouTube, don't wait on somebody to collab with you. You know what I'm saying? You might have to just start doing your own YouTube videos, start doing your own solo videos, putting that out there for people to see who you are, for them to come to you. Cause like, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's sometimes awful. if you don't have, if you don't have in, like, you could say that you're this and that, but if you don't have anything to show for it, like people may not believe you. Facts. That, you know, that's, like, that's, that's just truth, period. <laughs> and, and I don't, I like, I'm, I'm always the person that's like in between. I, look, I know some people hate that person sometimes it's like in the middle but like mm -hmm. sometimes like you have to see it from both sides like i know i'm not like i'm not really judging of like what other people choose to do but i do know that i vet people before i work with them so right. like if i don't see that you putting the work in or putting the time in and you you saying you want to do this and do that like i'm not, I'm not gonna <laughs> take your word for it i'm sorry like i've had a lot of people let me down by yeah. them telling me that they're going to do something and then they mm -hmm. never do it. Right. It's like, okay, well, show me. Let me see your work. Let me see your portfolio. It, it applies the same for us as content creators. You can't expect people to show up for you and do things with you mm -hmm. if you're not showing them that you have the, the portfolio that you're willing to put the work in. So if that was, that would probably be the top advice I would give any content creator, like work on yourself. Be a little selfish. Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. Do what you need to do to get to where you're trying to go. And then the help will come after. That's, oh my God. Yeah, it's preach, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think the that I had to learn that the hard way as well. But I, I had to look at it like this. Imagine a company comes to you. They got $20,000 check. They just want somebody to make them like five TikTok videos. If you don't show up and do what you say you're going to do, even on your own channel, if they go look at your channel and the last time you posted was like a month ago, they're not, they're skipping you. They're going over you. Exactly. And that's the same way with content creators. If they, if you see somebody and they're like, Hey, I want to do this stream with you. All right. But you go look and they haven't streamed in two months. Chances are the probably not going to show up for that stream. So you don't want to waste your time with that. Exactly. And somebody always has the blue, like the blueprint, you know, mm -hmm. like if a companies could go after anybody. Why would they choose you? You have to give them a reason. I hate exactly. to say it, but that's, that's just, that's just how it is. The sooner you realize that the easier it will be going forward. And, mm -hmm. and trust me, like waiting for people to link up on a video you're trying to put out or something of that nature can get really frustrating. So oh, I, very, oh, very. Oh I've been there done that when I was doing Lady Kaylee. And I, you know, like I said, I've, I've been through my trauma and <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lot. And that was the biggest thing for me. Like, don't sit and wait on anybody else to, to push you. Like, sometimes you have to be your biggest, like, hype man you got to hype mm -hmm. yourself up if it if it requires for you to give yourself words of affirmation and look in the mirror and tell yourself tell yourself every day like i'm awesome i'm great i'm going to do this you know whatever you need to tell yourself do it but you can't rely on somebody else to put you where you need to go because it's exactly. not up to them it's up to you i i will say this like every time i think about it this podcast was two three years in the making and i just kept pushing it off mostly because i was i wouldn't say i was waiting on other people but that was my excuse i was like well i don't want to do it by myself uh i'll just wait i'll, I'll link up with this person i'll link up with this person listen and then i day, understand completely <laughs> that's where i was at with mine i was i refused to do it because i'm like i had a few people that was like okay we can do it and then mm -hmm. like Either a, you know, our schedules never lined up, so I'm like nothing will ever get recorded, or like, you know, I'm just sitting and waiting, and it's not happening, and I'm missing out on the opportunities to just put the information that I'm like been holding on to for so long. Like, right? <laughs> I, I just finally was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm. It's gonna be a solo podcast then, because <laughs> exactly. You know, maybe people don't think I. I can format it in a way that is professional. So I was like, let me start putting in the work. 
and showing that I know how to format a podcast. And that's where that goes in. You have to be selfish a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I like that. You know what? I'm going to, we're going to segue into words of advice, even though your lessons learned, people should listen to that as well. Uh, that is definitely words of advice. Be a little bit selfish when it comes to your content. But uh, for those new streamers out there, what advice would you give them for those just starting off? Oh, don't use a microwave. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I don't think many people know what a microwave is. So go ahead and let them know. You know how like, you know, you, 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 you heat something up real quick. You want mm -hmm. quick results, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, it's streaming one building your brand and building your platforms. It's going to take time. It's not going to happen in a matter of days or weeks. That's mm -hmm. just the reality. And you have to, you have to be patient with yourself and be patient with others. Like things are not going to come to you as quick as you probably want them to. So I use that as an analogy. Like don't seek quick results. Don't right. use the microwave. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Like, you know, take your time with it. Learn, like learn about the business, learn about yourself, learn what you can work on. You know, when you do have people that come into your community, like ask them, it's okay to ask them, Hey, what do you think that I could do or work on that would improve my content? You know, right. like, there are people out there that's willing to give you good, like, good criticism if it's going mm -hmm. to help you along the long way. But you also have to be the person that's willing to receive it. So leading into the second advice. Yes. Don't take it personal. Exactly. <laughs> don't take it personal, okay? <laughs> I know a lot of a lot of new content creators, they have this. It's, and I think it's a lot from, like, who they watch. Like, you know how, like, some of the older streamers, some of them go on these rants about, like, how people don't really fuck with them. They don't really watch their content. Yeah. And like those, those aspiring streamers, content creators, they, they pull that, that energy from what they heard and then they apply it to themselves when they start doing it. And that, mm -hmm. that is a very negative trait to have as a content creator. Agree. Like you can't, people have their own personal lives that they have to deal with on a daily basis. A lot of us are like adults. We have families we have jobs like no one's going to actually have no one is going to always be available to you when you want them to. Facts. And, you know, you have to you have to learn to communicate better with people. If you're if you're seeking to be, you know, to be getting advice or, you know, having a one on one conversation with them. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, be patient. Exactly. And then, you know, this ties into the third one. Right. Yeah. Don't go on social media with your rants. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, please. Have we not learned that yet? What are we Listen, doing? Listen, I get tired of seeing content creators put someone else on blast because they had a small <laughs> petty disagreement. Mm -hmm. And then it blows up bigger than and what it should have. Now there's beef online and like all this unnecessary stuff. Like that. Exactly. You don't want to initially launch yourself as a brand having all these issues with other people because of a small misunderstanding or because you you tied your personal feelings into the situation you took it personal when that person might have had something going on but you didn't bother to ask them or communicate that mm -hmm. you know you felt some type of way now there's this big blow up on social media and everybody's fighting each other like that's not the way to go <laughs> And remember, companies have social media as well. They will look at your account and be like, oh, you was in a little tough two years mm -hmm. ago. I might not want to work with you then. So, oh, my God, this is young kids. I, I swear to God, they're just like, yeah, let's blow up on Let's get that drama going. Yes, it's going to get you like the wrong type of crowd, but it'll get you a crowd if that's what you want. <laughs> yeah, well, it definitely will. Oh, and not the goodness. right type either. Not at all. Not, it's not going to help you grow. You're going to be in constant disarray because you're going to be feeling stressed out because you got to respond to some Twitter message. I can't <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, well, Kaylee, thank you uh, for those words of advice. That's going to be information that is going to be golden for some of these new streamers out here. We have reached the end of our, our podcast. We are now oh, at the... Fast call to action right it goes quick <laughs> call to action i feel like i say this every time every content creator needs to be good about talking about what they do where they do it telling people where to go so i'm gonna leave this section for you what is your call to action to everyone listening what do you want us to do as far as your content goes i just want you to guys to love yourself 
speak candidly about the things you love about yourself and desire for yourself. Because the only person that could vouch for you is you. Facts. Yep. I love it. Also, what's the stream schedule look like? Are we? I, you know, I don't, <laughs> all right, we don't, we don't got to talk about it. We're I, good. We're good. I tell people all the time I do pop ups because every time I try to schedule like days that I want to stream, it never goes according to plan. You know, I end up having to maybe like run out the door with my partner mm -hmm. or dealing with the kids or something. So I usually I usually try to keep it around the same time frame. Gotcha. Um, I'm more of an evening night streamer, I would go to say. And then, you know, on the weekends, I try to do like mornings or afternoons so <laughs> i usually keep it at that <laughs> that's what the notification bells for go subscribe mm -hmm. to the channel and then you'll know when she goes live well let me go ahead and get my call to action now if you know any other creators or inspiring creators out there who can get any information or valuable sustenance from these type of conversations please share this podcast with them subscribe on your platform of choice i think i i'm finally up everywhere um and leave me a review let me know what you want to see in the future or if i'm doing a good job i like to know that as well um other than that okay thank you for rocking with me today i really appreciate it Thanks for inviting me. I was honored. All right. That is it. I appreciate everybody who's listening. Thank you. As always, protect your mental, keep creating content, and I will talk to you on the next one. Bye.